All right, as Prime Minister Theresa May is facing ongoing deadlock on her Brexit deal, London has seen a spike in knife attacks across the city, many criticizing the mayor, Sadiq Khan, for the rise in these deadly attacks because of budget cuts. So joining us now to break it all down, former UK MP George Galloway. Uh, George, first, let's address these recent killings. It's not only across London. It's happening all across the UK, it appears. Uh, but London, Sadiq Khan says... He's done the best he can with recent budget issues. Uh, the former head of Met says the prime minister is just not listening to police. So where does the police go from here to protect the citizens? Well, the police and the public have been betrayed by government cuts. There's no denying that. 21,000 police officers have been lost uh, over the last uh, eight and a half years. And you simply can't. Uh, run down the police force, denude it of resource, and not expect uh, crime to go undetected uh, before it happens. And there's no doubt at all that until now, the vast majority of stabbing victims have been young black boys, but we have now reached a point where young white girls and in a recent case in Cheshire, uh, where two of my own children live, uh, a young Arab boy of great promise stabbed in a leafy, multi-million dollar home area. So it's kind of reached a critical mass, and now everyone's talking about it. When it was young black boys that were primarily the mm. victims, everyone was turning their faces away. But at the same time, Sadiq Khan has this to answer for. He endlessly perambulates around identity politics issues, gay rights, trans rights, uh, on all kinds of identity politics issues. You, he's never off the media, but he's never visible down on the street where these knifings are happening. So I blame both the mayor and the government. The government more because they control the purse strings. The mayor because he is not commanding the optics. He is not mobilizing public opinion to force the government to cough up the resources that the police are needing. Hundreds of people, Manila, hundreds of young lives have been lost over the last couple of years or less uh, in England through knifings. And that's not just the dead who've You're lost right. their lives, the people who committed the crimes and then go to prison for a decade or more, their lives are ruined too. That's right, and everyone here, it's no good for anybody involved in stuff like this. So, as you said, is seeing that the government is also to blame because they control the purse strings, is Mrs. May distracted by Brexit, so much so that she is failing to see the need back at home. And you know, given her time as, as Home Secretary for six years, should her approach be different? Definitely, uh, it all the buck stops with her in both her previous incarnation and her present. And she made the nonsensical, logically absurd situation uh, suggestion this week that cuts in police officers, cuts in police budgets cannot be related to a spike, if you'll forgive the pun, in knife crimes. Well, on that basis, why do we have any police at all? If there's no connection between how many police you've got, how much resource they've got, and the actual level of crime, well, uh, the logic of that would be that having police is of no value at all. So she's under fire uh, on this uh, question, but not enough of it, because too many people are spending too much time talking about, about extraneous and peripheral issues, the identity politics epidemic that I spoke to you about yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and not to mention, George, um, the fact that 21,000 police officers are no more, that puts more people out of work and bad for the economy as well. And as you know, when the economy is bad, crime goes up. Exactly. Uh, the economy is bad, crime goes up, police officer numbers go down. What kind of world is that that we're living in? And what kind of right-wing conservative government attacks yes. the police, attacks their numbers? It's a world gone mad, Manila. I often pinch myself and wonder <laughs> if this is all a bad dream. And now, George, over to, to Brexit talk. Um, the EU has mm. given her 48 hours. 
uh, of an ultimatum. They're insisting, though, that the that the Irish backstop will only be temporary until the UK can sort out a replacement trading partnership. At this point, should Mrs. May take them at their word? It's squeaky bum time here, as we say. It's the time when they're all shifting uneasily in their seats because the final whistle is imminent. And uh, everyone now is waiting to see who will blink. I continue to believe that the EU will agree a form of words with Theresa May that will allow her deal to go through. If it doesn't, and then the no-deal Brexit is also rejected in Parliament, we're into an extension of Article 50. In other words, we don't leave on the 29th mm -hmm. of March as currently uh, we are scheduled to do. Uh, but that will concentrate all kinds of minds. Concentrates the minds of Labour people who want Brexit. Concentrates the mind of Conservative people who don't think her Brexit is Brexit enough. If they allow it to be delayed, will they be left with something even worse? You might find, I believe you will, that next week Theresa May manages to get this through. Then she'll be gone. We'll be right into a new Conservative leadership election. And then, I think, into a general election. All right. We will see if that prediction comes true. As always, George Galloway, thank you so much for sharing some time with us today. Welcome. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.